What is up guys? We are live here at Pro Play Games and we have the brand new exciting set Battles of Legends Relentless Revenge. This is the second in the expansion of the Battles of Legend uh, series from Konami. Uh, this set is infamous, infamous for a very, very controversial reprints. So we're going to see exactly what they decided to reprint this time. Heard a lot of good, a lot of cool goodies. If you guys were wondering about the background, this is a new Chromia skin playmat, which is really cool from Ultimate Guard. So if you guys haven't seen it, check it out. Super cool. If you're one of those people with short attention span, it is fantastic when you're playing. You could even put life points on here if you really wanted to. But anyways, it's reacted to heat. I mean, it's crazy how they can do, what they can do with technology these days. But anyways, here's the whole box. We're gonna go give it a crack, see exactly what we can get. There are some notable reprints in this set. I mean, uh, short prints, sorry. Obviously reprints. But uh, the first pack in each, uh, first card in each pack is the secret rare and then the rest of them are ultras So we're gonna see exactly here what comes out. This is a new card So not only does this have reprints, but it has new cards uh, here. We have number 90 galaxy eyes photon lord We know how much Konami loves their galaxy cards. So there's one ultra guys manifestation for the ultra Whoa, focus All right preparation of rights can't really count how many times they've reprinted that card But that's another reprint cyber larva larva and dark lord contract so we have uh it's pretty cool because they did reprint a lot of Dark Lord cards for some reason. Understandably, I guess it's only been printed once, so I'm going to separate secrets and I'll just here. Move this up a little bit. Sorry, guys. See exactly what we can crack here. Uh, chase cards in the set. We have Trickstar Reincarnation. Oh, Gammy Seal's one. Gamma Seal uh, looks really nice. These Kaijus look really cool as foils, uh, notably the Secret Rare. Looks really, really nice. We got Summon Dice, never seen this card before. Solemn Judgment, that's a great reprint uh, because the commons were almost five bucks, so now you have a nice ultra rare that you can at least spend like less than five bucks on, most likely. Duelist Alliance, that's a good reprint for Penlums. I mean, it's been reprinted a few times, so I don't know if it was necessary, but Litmus Doom Swordsman, really cool. Haven't seen Rituals in a while. I felt like Konami forgot about them. We'll start putting the old there. Let's go for this pack right here. All right, so we'll see what else we can pull. There's Trick Shot Reincarnation. Uh, I'm really blanking, I don't even know what else. Uh, Supreme King, Dragon, Dark Worm, that's really good because Pendulum's made a resurgence. Uh, they've been topping a lot of events, got second place at the UK Nationals, so we'll see how it does at US Nationals, but super good card. I'll put that secret right here. And then a uh, pretty good reprint in Unending Nightmare, very good against Pendulum's, uh, Torrential Tribute. Born from Draconis, which I've never seen before. That must be a new card. And Altergeist. I'm pretty sure I've seen this before. That, that should be a reprint. So pretty good for those Altergeist players that were missing that card. I don't think it was very expensive, though, so I don't know if it was necessary, but... Ooh, Phantom Knights Fogblade. That's right. They reprinted a lot of the Phantom Knights in the set. Uh, this one was very expensive. It was creeping like 15, 20 bucks, and now you're going to get it for probably under 5 bucks. So really cool. We'll also be doing a financial analysis after this because I know how you guys want to know the ratios. You want to know exactly if it's worth buying this set or not. And a lot of people don't actually do that or have the ability to do that. So we're going to be bringing that to you on this channel. Performage Trick Clown. Fantastic card. Uh, I think this was long overdue for a high rarity bump. So super cool on that. Solemn Judgment. Another Litmus. And Noble Knight Brothers, that's another good one. Noble Knight Brothers. I think Noble Knights are getting some support in the future. I might have heard that incorrectly, but I'm pretty sure I heard something about that. So that's good how they're like uh, setting up for their uh, future releases here. Uh, Dark Lord Ixchel, like I said, Dark Lords are reprinted in this set, so really good. Banishment of the Dark Lords, another good Dark Lord card that you need. Iron Hands, of course. Uh, Konami always with his puns. Almost sounds like Iron Hands. Cyframe Driver. Now, this is an excellent reprint. We had a Cyframe Gamma reprint and made the driver grow up to like six, seven, eight bucks. And now we got an ultra rare printing. So I know people don't like the Garnet foil, but at least it's a reprint. So people don't have to pay outrageous values anymore. And of course, the Dark Lord Nasdin. So uh, that's pretty good. I think each shell before this was like 15, 20. So it's always good to see those reprints of cards that really shouldn't be that high because they're not meta, like they're not meta or reliant. 
uh, Glyph, the Phantom Board. That's the first time I see this card, so it should be a... Oh, this is a card that gets the uh, Golden Castle, which is a short print. That's one of the short prints that people are actually looking for. Uh, very powerful card. We're going to see if that makes any type of dent in the U.S. National Qualifiers this weekend. Uh, Foolish Burial of Goods, uh, the Million 3 print, of course. Uh, you can never have enough Foolish Burial Goods. They're trying to reprint this card as many times as they did uh, Foolish Burial. Uh, whoa. This card. Never seen this before, actually. Idatin, the Conqueror Star. All right. Trickstar, Narcissus. And TG Wonder Magician. Really cool. TG Wonder Magician, by the way, great reprint because um, this tells us a few things that uh, Needle Fiber Ill will be on its way very soon. And it's a very useful card in that deck, so that's a, that's a great little reprint to have and to hold on to because uh, this will probably be the best time to get them at, as long as they're very, very cheap. All right, guys, so it looks like we still have a bunch of cards to go. From what I've seen on the box openings, you really can't pull every single card, so boom! Oh, snap! Uh, Topologic Gumblar Dragon. This is actually going to be one of the premier players from the set. Uh, very powerful effect, uh, allowing you to discard up to four cards. Yes, four cards from your opponent's hand in, in total. So, very, very powerful card. Uh, it, it is a link four. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people start utilizing this in this weekend's uh, National Championship Qualifier. Uh, over in Texas this weekend. It's a very, very powerful card, and we'll see exactly what decks are going to be utilizing this. My bets are on Goki, but we'll see what other type of decks are going to abuse this monster because this guy is really, really good. Uh, actually, one of the chase cards from the set, too, so great pull. All right, then we got one of the Time Lords. They reprinted a lot of Time Lords in here and gave us some new Time Lords, so this Cephion, that's a reprint. That's not a new one, but we got Babuska here, number 41, another Cypher and Driver. And we got Bottomless Trap Hole, another reprint. All right, so we'll see if we can pull any of those new Time Lords as well. Kind of show you what they're about. We got the glorious numbers here. Good for number cards. We did get some few new number cards in here, so see how that plays out. Naruto, the moral leader. Uh, Tenma, the Sky, uh, Sky Star, which... Uh, I think people are going to be using Ngokis, their warriors as well, and they can like special summon and spam and stuff like that, so we'll see if people use that. Dark Lord contract, uh, Contact, another Dark Lord card, and Cyber Dragon itself. Glorious Numbers, not a money secret rare. The other secret rares that we've been pulling, uh, pretty decent, at least like a dollar or two. Oh, the boat, number 27, Dreadnought Dreadnoid. Now this card, fun fact, started off at like three, four bucks and now they're like 15, 20 bucks. Reason is, uh, you can only pull one of these bad boys per case, if you're lucky. Um, never pulled more than two in a case. Uh, we'll see exactly how this card shapes up in the future. I don't know how competitive it might be. It is uh, something that did have uh, quite a bit of hype for a little bit, but I don't know if it's the time and place for this card to be out. I know that if this was out a little bit earlier, back when like maybe zoos were out, it would be a lot more relevant, but very powerful card. It has a potential, a huge potential, not only because of its low supply, but because of how unique it is. But uh, anyways, we have Power Rex, the Elemental Lord, uh, Konami, printing out these Elemental Lords as much as possible so that everybody has access to them uh, because they do want to push those Element Sabers. So uh, that's a pretty good reprint. They used to be like five bucks. Now they're probably only going to be a dollar or so. Cyber Altonin, TG Warrior, um, Magician, and then we got the Gaia Saber. That's a, uh, didn't see this one coming, but really cool because it does have a unique um, arrow configuration, and it's a, it's just a decent link. So, really cool. Do we get a, oh yeah. All right, on to the next, on to the next. Tornado Dragon, that's a great reprint. Used to be 15, 20 bucks. Uh, now we're probably going to see it at the $5 range if we're lucky. Really great card. Uh, Neospatian, Aqua Dolphin. Don't know why they gave us some Neospatians. I'm guessing they're getting some more support in the future or they just wanted to troll us. One of those two. Iron Cage, I know that's new. Don't know how relevant it is. Another Neospatian. And Noble Knight Brothers to add to the Noble Knight family. Uh, that card, Madrot and Merlin, I believe you can find all in this set. Which set you up, I mean, like, at least the Madrod. The Madrod, I think, was the most expensive one or so. 
Phantom Knights of Ancient Cloak, like I was saying. Phantom Knights getting a reprint. Uh, almost all the good ones. Ancient Cloak being a good one. It was creeping up in value, apparently, so that's a good one to have. Uh, Eater of Millions. Um, I think this is one of my favorite reprints in the set. Uh, giving it a foil version that, like it deserves, it's been getting a lot of play. Unizombie. Very good. They're pushing a lot of zombie support. Hint, hint. So pick up your zombie cards ASAP. Uh, I can see zombies being very relevant in the future. At least the price. World Legacy's Heart. Don't know why they gave us that. And Pumpkin Char Carriage. Uh, another card to add on to that whole, like, Golden Castle of Stormberg type mini support that we got in the set. Exclusive to the set, by the way. So if you want to play any of those cards, you're going to have to crack this set for sure. Or just buy the singles. Uh, Phantom Knights of Silent Boots. That's another one. Not a very expensive one. I think that could have been an ultra rare, but I don't know why they gave it to us in secret. Uh, Tenma. I don't know if we went over this, but it's Sky Star. Uh, Torrential Tribute. Uh, nice reprint. I like the ultra rare. Pumpkin Carriage. We saw that one already. And Trickstar Narcissus. Uh, that's a rarity bump. I don't even know if Trickstars play it. I don't even know if it's relevant, but it's an ultra rare from a common. So. That's nice. People can foil out their Trickstar decks if they even play them. Uh, Living Fossil, I really like this card. It's like a premature burial, but it negates the card's effects, and it's only for a lower monster. But uh, regardless, I think that might be uh, relevant in the future. It's also an equip spell, so you can get it uh, during the whole, like, uh, Goki shenanigans. Uh, slash Draw, uh, brand new card. World Legacy Discovery. Kaiju Files, that's kind of troll. Um, and then Perform Age Damage Juggler. Jeez, Focus. This looks so fantastic in ultra rare, like the gold, the golding and the, and the art and just everything about that is uh, really, really nice. Uh, looks like we have another 10 packs to go. Another living fossil, that's the second one. That's the first copy, uh, duplicate I think we've gotten. Uh, Litmus uh, Doom Ritual, that's for the ritual card, the only ritual card in this whole set, Iron Hands. Um, Michion, the Time Lord, uh, this is one of the brand new Time Lords that I was talking about, uh, that this set debuted. Uh, I guess it's gonna be something every Battle of the Legends we're gonna get new Time Lords, I guess, but, uh, that's pretty cool, anyways. And Kyoto Waterfall, uh, Waterfront, I think this was a well-deserved, uh, reprint. Looks really nice, and it's a very, very relevant card. Yeah, even in non-Kaiju decks, like in World Chalice, when you make the Gamma Seal and stuff like that, it's really good. Alright, guys, and we're back. And we're down the home stretch here, trying to pull the Stormberg, the the Gold Knight or the Golden Castle or whatever. Uh, Brilliant Fusion. That's a great reprint, actually. This is fantastic. I, I almost treated it like it's nothing, but this is fantastic. They used to be like 15, 20 bucks, and now you're you're gonna be able to play that in almost everything. And and then you got the whole like uh, juggler engine that you can play. So really, really cool. Another Foolish Barrel of Goods, a Rainbow Dark Dragon. That's a really random reprint, but great. I love it. Looks really cool. Dark Lord Enchantment, not really necessary in the deck, I don't think. And then Iron Knight to go along with those Iron Hands, you know? How are you going to have Iron Hands without an Iron Knight? All right, Union Hanger, that's great. Um, this is probably going to be expensive. They already had a super rare printing, so I don't know how I feel about this, but Secret looks pretty nice, and I think that's a very good reprint. Because it, it used to be just Star Deck exclusive and then OTS, so now you're able to get it uh, another way. Madrot, Fantastic Reprint, already went over. Solemn Strike, now Solemn Strike, wow. Konami really just uh, scrambled for this one. Ultra Rare, so they, they, at least they didn't get us that way, you know, by making this a secret rare again. But Ultra Rare, I think that's really value. It's gonna get a lot of people with Solemn Strike in their hand, but I don't know how relevant strike, Solemn Strike is now in this day and age, in this format where you don't even play traps almost anymore. Covert Contact, and Kaiki, the Unity Star. So that's another Unity Star Warrior card that you can play in that Goki deck of that iteration of um, that iteration of the Gokis with that engine. Like I said, don't know how relevant it's going to be, but it's there. Prenzison. Okay, so funny story about this card. They didn't want to use Princess because they were like trying to dodge the whole like Disney trying to like uh, somehow lawsuit them or something like Magic did with spells and Magic cards. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty much princess in German. And so everywhere else in, in the US or everywhere else in like like in Europe this is actually called princess, which is really troll. And then here it's just not. Um, but yeah, banishment of the dark dark lords, eater of millions, cyber dragon, another reprint, like fifty billionth reprint, and it's been ultra rare like at least five thousand times before. And then a full metaphose alkyze, which is 
interesting. I mean, I don't know. Like I said, there's a lot of irrelevant cards that they reprinted in the set. But they did a, they did a good job. They had some like uh, really chase cards in here, and then kind of sprinkled it with a bunch of irrelevant shiny stuff. Uh, glass slippers, uh, an equip card, very good for the uh, princess card. It's funny because they, you know what they were trying to do, but they they were trying to like dodge it, you know, not get in trouble. Slimy, slimy. Uh, Pyrorex manifestation. Hayate. The Earth Star. I think that's another one of those uh, star monsters. And then Windrose, the Elemental Lord. Like I said, they're reprinting a lot of the Elemental Lord so that you can play those Elemental Sabers. Uh, Mulan Glacia and Grand Soil getting a reprint in the Special Editions. And now uh, the other Elemental Lords coming in here. We got another Metal Foes card for some reason. Metal Foes Mithrilium as a Secret Rare. Pretty bad. Only like 50 cents. But I'm Duck. I'm a Duck. This guy's pretty cool, actually. Really, really cool uh, foiling. Ultra Rare. I think that was a good rarity bump for that. Uh, Unizombie, born from Draconius, and Sandion, the land, the Time Lord. So that's a new Time Lord. Uh, really cool. Uh, adds to the Time Lord family. Don't know how relevant these are going to be. So far, out of all the Time Lords that we've gotten, I think only one has been really relevant, and it's been Zafion. Because it was very good against True Dracos and back row decks. But another Mithrilium. That was pretty unfortunate. Two back-to-back -back Mithriliums. Unending Nightmare. Cyber Eltonin, I mean, they're really pushing the Cyber Dragon agenda here with Cybernetic Horizons around the corner. Um, might I say, uh, Cybernetic Horizons on, on the horizon. But um, I don't know how relevant it's going to be. I'm sure they'll push it and make it relevant, hopefully. But Konami tries to make things relevant sometimes and they just don't fully follow through. So take that with a grain of salt. Uh, Infinite Light. I don't know what this card is. A Time Lord card. Okay. Uh, Solemn Strike. Once again, uh, Gabrion, the Time Lord. That's another Time Lord there. That's another new one. Oh, focus. It's a lot of text. Iron Knight. Neospatian Hummingbird. More Neospatians for those of you who couldn't get enough of them. I remember when they pushed them back in the day with like the baby versions of them and all the crazy spell cards and they never really did anything. Another one of those phantom birds that search you the gold castle, which we have yet to pull. Hopefully, it's in those last two packs. But yeah, Medion. Don't know if that need a reprint really. I guess they gave it to us anyways. Babuska and World Legacy's Heart and another Diamond Juggler. All right, please, please, one time. I know we've been really doing. We've been getting pretty lucky on all these on-camera box openings, so can't really cry if we don't get it, but. It's right here. Ah, oh, damn it. All right, Iron Call. Uh, that's the, oh, well, Iron Draw, sorry. Iron Call is another card, but this is an Iron Draw. It is a pretty interesting effect. Uh, it's revolved around machine effect monsters, so uh, that might be relevant in the future. Another new Time Lord, Halion. Summon Dice, Wind Rose, Duelist Alliance. Last pack, ladies and gentlemen. Can this be? Can this be it? Oh, it's a trap card, damn it. Infinite Light. Awful. Iron Cage, pre-prep. Oh, pre-prep. That's pretty cool. That's a good one. Raffion. Jeez, I feel like they're running out of ideas on this. And Waterfront. All right, guys, that is the box opening. We're going to clean this up and give you a little overview in just a moment. All right, guys, we are back with a final breakdown, and we got a financial analysis for you guys, too, so we can know exactly how much we made out of this case. So first, we had Brilliant Fusion sitting at about $4. Of course, these prices are obviously due to fluctuation and stuff like that, but we'll see exactly what they settle out to be. But these are the current prices rounded down. Uh, Ixchel is sitting at about $5. Uh, the Gamma Seal sitting around five dollars as well uh the number 27 this was the short print from the set i mean it's very high for some reason now they started off at five but they're at 13 so we put them at 13 for now uh fog blade sitting at about three all these other ones sitting about three we, we only picked out cards that were more than three dollars or uh, three dollars or more so all these sitting at about three dollars right now market price 
Um, Gumblar Dragon, the, the big one, uh, the money card in the set at $20. And then you got Tornado Dragon at four, and you got Union Hanger at four as well. So averaging uh, a little bit over $75, almost $80 per box, which is very good estimated value for a box. So really cool if you guys can get your hands on these boxes uh, for cheap. I think it would be the one of the best investments that you can make because a lot of these cards that I didn't mention can have the potential of going much, much higher in value. Uh, just like Battle of Legends 1, you see it's settling at about $95 a box now, and it can go up higher and higher as more time progresses. I think this is a very, it's like a gold investment, how, how you sit on it for a little bit and it goes higher. It is going to be an excellent set to invest into, and uh, we'll give you some case ratios now also because we did open a lot of cases. We can give you the short prints of what exactly to expect as you buy your cases. All right, so for the case ratios as far as like the short prints and this is over like at least 20 cases guys uh these are the ones that we saw a little bit dip below a little bit from the average secrets per case uh there weren't really any short prints ultras these were just for really for the secret side uh flash charge dragon which is really weird uh flying elephant uh the golden castle of course of stormberg that one being the most heavily short printed card uh anywhere from zero to two a case uh number 27 right here the dreadnoid which we actually got really lucky with uh pulling those can be anywhere from zero to one a case so that's even more short printed than the golden castle but obviously the golden castle being a little bit more relevant uh number 75 the shadow that one have no explanation for um the gumblar dragon which we actually uh pulled another short print as well too so we got pretty lucky on this box and uh, a surprising one in supreme king uh, dark worm so those are pretty much all the short prints that you'll be expecting in the set everything else is pretty well uh distributed this is going to be a very excellent set if you guys can get your price uh get your boxes in for cheap uh we were pre-selling this set for 65 i still i still believe we have the lowest price on tcg player at like 70 75 dollars make sure you lock in your uh box pre-orders and the singles i think we have the lowest singles on tcg player we even rival Yu-Gi-Oh singles and troll and toad prices so uh even if it's not on tcg player we normally have the best uh selection best inventory and best prices so make sure you check us out for all your uh, battles of legends and every set you know from now on thank you guys again for watching the video really appreciate it hope to see you at national to see me there say hi say hi to the ppg team we'll be there brand new jerseys can't wait to see you guys there and best of luck till next time peace